just rang a video doorbell. It's a growing field of smart home tech that lets you see and talk to whoever's at your door. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave this here. And today, we're gonna find out which one is the best. We've narrowed the options to two finalists, the Ring Video Doorbell Pro and the Nest Hello. There are lots of other video doorbells out there, including battery powered options. These two are our favorites. They're top of the line models and they both bring a lot to the table. So we're gonna dive in and figure out which one fits the best on your porch. For installation, both of the models need to be hardwired. Fortunately, they each walk you through all of the steps of the process. Basically, the steps of both are the same. You attach a power kit to the internal doorbell chime, then you connect the wires from your old doorbell to the back of the device and attach it to your wall. Some of the steps might differ depending on your current doorbell, but the instructions for both are pretty clear. The Ring Video Doorbell Pro costs 250 bucks. It captures video in 1080p, it has 160 degree field of view, night vision, it will send you alerts if it detects motion, then you can pull up a live feed to see who's there. It won't save any footage unless you pay three bucks a month for cloud storage, which is a bummer. The Nest Hello has similar specs, 230 bucks, 160 degrees, night vision, motion alerts. The resolution is a little less than 1080p, 1600 by 1200 to be exact. You can pull up a live feed. You can also get personal alerts for free, so you can customize your notifications for when the hello sees a human instead of a leaf. Plus, it saves images from the alerts for three hours for free. The Nest Hello can recognize faces as well, but you need to pay for that feature and any cloud storage. Nest Aware subscriptions start at five bucks a month. Okay, installation's done. Let's put them to the test. Since they both offer motion alerts, one of the key things that they can do is protect your packages from porch pirates. With this test, the porch pirate will follow the same route and grab the same box to see what the two cams capture. With Nest, the alert comes quickly enough that I catch the pirate in the act. The recorded footage on the right shows the entire route and I get a clear view of the culprit. Now notice with Ring, the recorded clip is nearly identical. I catch the whole act and get a clear view of the pirate's face, but the alert on the left is delivered much later. If I wanna take action myself, I don't get as much chance. You'll need to pay the monthly fee to see these recordings with both. Then Ring gives you 60 days of cloud storage and Nest saves footage for 30. Ring does let you set motion zones for free, Nest doesn't, but Nest wins this first round thanks to the faster speed. With both, you can yell at the porch pirate to protect your package. Hey, porch pirate, scram. Now that I've scared off that porch pirate, it's time I kicked back and chilled for the rest of the afternoon. So I'm gonna see which of these doorbells can help the most if I'm feeling particularly lazy. I order a pizza, cause what better way to celebrate a relaxing afternoon? When the delivery person arrives, she rings. I hear the chime and get the notification on both of the apps. Both offer two-way talk, so I can say, come on in. And if I left the door unlocked and the delivery person is brave enough, I can enjoy a slice without ever getting up. But what if I didn't leave the door unlocked? Rewind. Pizza person comes, notification, two-way talk. Ah, crap, the door's locked. Well, if I have a smart lock, problem solved. But even though Google owns Nest and Amazon owns Ring, neither doorbell makes the process any easier. Still, I get my pizza, so I'm happy. But what if I don't have my phone on me? Dang it, rewind. Pizza person comes. I might need to actually get up when I hear the doorbell, unless I have a smart display or a smart speaker. Here's where the parent companies change things. If I have a Google smart speaker or smart display, the Nest Hello works better. I'll hear the announcement and can chat with the pizza person. With a smart display, I can even see what's going on. Ring has the same advantage if you have an Amazon speaker or display. The announcements don't work if you mix and match, so I would need to actually get off the couch of all the terrible things. But let's throw in a twist. What if it's not the pizza person, but that weird neighbor you've been trying to avoid? One last time, rewind. Again, if you have your phone on you or a compatible smart display, you can see it's the neighbor with both and stay very quiet. 
and Nest has an additional advantage if you pay for the subscription. If the neighbor has been over before and you've told the system who it is, your Google device can announce that the creepy neighbor is at the door. So I can hide under the couch a little quicker with the Nest Hello subscription in case he starts peeking in the damn windows or something weird like that. So both doorbells are actually pretty good options. But both Nest and Ring have recently had issues with compatibility and privacy, and those things aren't quite as fun. So here's the Porch Pirate to talk through them. Hey, Porch Pirate, what's going on with Nest? Well, basically, Google is in the process of rolling back the program that let third-party devices work directly with Nest products like this one. Well, so that affects the doorbell? I mean, matey. Basically, it means that Nest isn't going to work with quite as many products as it has worked with in the past. Now, Google is asking customers to migrate over to a new Works with Google Assistant account, but right now the Nest ecosystem feels just like a bit of a mess. Well, that kind of sucks, but let's talk about Ring. So is Ring's situation worse? Well, it depends on what you care about. No, Ring isn't going through the messy transition that Google is, but Ring and Amazon have worked closely with police forces across the US to get into some kind of problematic stuff. Like they wanted to pull facial recognition data from police databases to warn you of danger, but that could really easily lead to profiling problems. Needless to say, these moves have seriously troubled privacy groups that are worried about the risk of a burgeoning surveillance state. Oh, well, that's troubling. Yeah, so between the two cameras, Google is still trying to work out its connectivity kinks. And meanwhile, Ring is still trying to decide where it wants to draw the line when it comes to privacy issues. You pick your poison. Huh. Okay. Well, thank you, Porch Pirate. Or. Right. Okay, so both have associated headaches, but they still have really good hardware with a lot of good strengths. Nest can even show your front door on the TV with Chromecast, and Ring works with Amazon's Fire TV. The Ring Doorbell Pro works great if you're already invested in Amazon smart home stuff. The Nest Hello is the best choice if you have Google Assistant devices like a Nest Hub, and because it also has advanced features like facial recognition, the Nest Hello wins the day and is our choice for the best video doorbell. The U.S. Army's front line has a bright new vision. On Wednesday here at Fort Riley, members of the new Armed Futures Command unveiled their brand new ENVGB enhanced night vision goggles. Unlike past sets of binoculars used by armed fighters in combat, these goggles can work off heat signatures. Sensors on the soldier's helmet and rifle help them find threats that may be tricky to spot with the naked eye. This is quite literally a game changer. The old form of night vision glasses required a light source like moonlight but these don't. It's going to make us more lethal, more mobile. Sergeant Brian Baker and his colleague from the U.S. Marine Corps, Sergeant John Finley, demonstrated how sensors on the rifle stock permit the infantry member to look and shoot around corners while never exposing their bodies to the enemy. We're going to have systems and functions that can directly report to a higher headquarters in the event that somebody gets hurt or somebody gets injured. We're going to be able to increase our medevac uh, speeds and recovery speeds for injured soldiers on the battlefield. I can shoot from positions that don't expose my body at all. Not only that, I can, <laughs> I can identify and react to threats faster purely because not only do I not need ambient light, I can see thermal. This event is so important to the U.S. military. I just picked up that weapon and it's intuitive. I'm a warfighter. Sergeant Major of the Army Michael Grinston attended. One of the U.S. Army's top officers in uniform says this new tech is the result of listening to soldiers' needs. That's just that's just how we're going to be. You're always giving that feedback, but now you can see the, the, the benefits of it that you get a product and it actually works. The Army Sergeant Major was also quick to point out that his most powerful weapons are actually the men and women who serve in uniform. Gadgets like these merely help them do their job and thankfully to keep them alive. Sean McDowell, Fox 4 News. 
Now to the alleged crime caught on camera. Police night vision cameras revealing a rooftop showdown here in New York. The footage taken from a helicopter. Three home invasion robbery suspects rounded up by police and taken into custody. And among the throngs of tourists here in New York for the new year, one unexpected visitor. This is believed to be a humpback whale right here in the East River. Cleaner waters and an uptick in bait fish may be contributing to that visit. And this passing to note tonight. Father Mulcahy, William Christopher from MASH, dead at the age of 84 in Southern California after a battle with lung cancer. This week, we're going to look at something that is so crucial for fighting at night. Night is something that's been used throughout history as an advantage in war. And one of the things that we do in modern warfare to dominate the night for our ground forces is night vision technology. You've probably heard about this, you've seen it in the movies, night vision goggles, night vision devices, nods, right? But what are we gonna do next? Recently, our army has bought $97 million worth of a new device, a futuristic device, that is going to provide a very big, significant advantage. And it's got so many cool features, I, I really don't even know where to begin. But let's start with this one. Currently, what usually needs to happen is that you have night vision, right, up here, some sort of device, and then on your weapon, you have thermal. So you're going to have to, if you're going to engage with the enemy, you've got to shift from your night vision that you're wearing to your weapon. In warfare, that split second can make a huge difference. So the time difference is a big advantage with this new technology because it kind of takes these two concepts, combines them into one approach to dominating the night. Another key advantage, what we want to do is be able to make sure our warfighters can stay behind something safe, right? So let's picture a stone wall or uh, the corner of a building, right? Wouldn't it be amazing if the enemy was out there posing a threat, firing at our forces, and our soldiers did not have to expose themselves to a single shot, but instead could identify precisely where those threats are and without exposing themselves once to a single bullet, could take a precise shot and eliminate the threat. That is actually what this device can do. So you can picture putting the rifle around the corner of the building. That rifle can see the threat. It sends the information to the eye, the monocular, and with a touch of a button, the warfighter can see exactly what that rifle can see and take the shot without ever being at risk at all. So the third piece of this that I really want to stress to you guys that's fantastic about this new technology is that it's lighter weight, uh, it's also providing much clearer, much sharper images so you can see farther and better than what's currently fielded most widely. And that's an incredible advantage, right? Because that sort of precision, the ability to be able to see so precisely with such clarity will really enable our soldiers to distinguish between a, someone who's a threat and not a threat. They've been working really hard on this. This has been a US Army program with BAE Systems. Super impressed with how fast this has come along. And I'm so excited it's going to be getting into our soldiers' hands pretty quickly, I mean remarkably quickly for our, our usual processing. And why does it matter so much? We want to make sure that our soldiers have the very best technology to dominate the night. We want to make sure that they're still owning the night and not on the receiving end of enemies being able to see at night better than we can. And this matters in, as well in terms of just mission success and most importantly, keeping our soldiers alive, right? The ability to keep our soldiers behind cover, safe cover, and take a shot to eliminate a threat doesn't really get much better than that, right? That's it for today on Night Vision. Come back next week for even more exciting advances in military technology. You can find more stories, and if you're interested in the topic, on foxnews.com and Fox Firepower, where every week we cover the most exciting breakthrough technologies for our nation's defense. I'm Allison Berry for Fox News, and I'll see you here next time. Exciting news for soldiers. They may soon get their hands on entirely new, kind of next generation, far more advanced night vision goggles than they've previously had. They'll be more similar to what the special operations have been using. So picture more of a binocular approach than a monocular approach. This is gonna be a great advantage for them. It'll allow them to see far better at night, similar to the way they see at day. So they'll be able to see the enemy at night as they do in the day.
So the Army is looking to use some of this extra $800 million and invest it into giving our soldiers new night vision goggles. And why does that matter? Because of course we want to have the best force protection as possible. And if we can improve the way the soldiers can see at night or see through fog or see through obscure conditions like sand, Night vision goggles are also very useful for that, being able to see the enemy through those tough conditions. Right now, they're using a very basic model, uh, which is something like the PVS-14 or the ENVG, and this is a leap ahead for them in terms of the capabilities that they'll be able to bring to the field. Details right now are thin on the ground because this has just recently been announced, but I do want to mention it because this is a very exciting and new capability that our soldiers will have. So what sorts of things could we be thinking about? Well, we've had two breakthroughs that I'd like to mention can't guarantee that they'd be included in this sort of night vision that they're going to be equipped with, but I'd love for our soldiers to see this sort of stuff. We've had a breakthrough in uh, combining image intensification with the thermal imaging. So by that I mean being able to kind of zero in on a specific thing, like a binocular, I suppose, in a way, giving you that more precise clarity on what you're looking at if you need to be like, is it a toy, is it a grenade, for example, that a child's holding. Another breakthrough that people are very stoked about is the ability to connect the weapon site with the night vision goggles. That would be another great advantage. But is that enough? It's clearly not enough. We need to do much more in terms of the advances. Uh, we have not been, we've not been aggressive enough in terms of innovating. Uh, states, countries that are unfriendly to us have been rapidly catching up, if not matching and possibly surpassing our night vision capabilities. What would I like to see in terms of the advances? Uh, far more aggressive, like I stated earlier. What do I mean by that? Well, we need to, that image intensification, being able to zoom in, that's one great example. I think the best picture I could give you is think something like Terminator style vision or Robocop style vision. Sound ridiculous, sound like sci-fi? It's not. This is, this is the future of combat. And this is where our hostile countries are going, countries who are hostile to us, they're going in that direction. So what sort of things does that bring to our soldier on the field? Uh, what sort of practical advantages? Think about a drone feed, eyes in the sky. Uh, not only would you be able to see at night, but you could see what the drone is seeing from above right there on the same place. Let's think about the, the actual feel of these goggles. I mean, these night vision goggles are unacceptably heavy and unacceptably cumbersome. It's just not okay. Why haven't we done better? Uh, right now, they're, you've seen them, they're quite awkward and clunky looking. Why can't they just be like sunglasses, right? So think Oakleys or Gators. Why can't we be blending the technology to something that's seamless and easy to use and comfortable and lightweight for our operators and our, all of our warfighters? That makes more sense to me and that's something that we should be doing and also hostile countries are going in that direction. I also would like to see things like being able to communicate, so networked night vision goggles, right? So you could communicate the command, so you can see the same things that you're seeing through your night vision goggles. Uh, they can feed you information, you can feed information from team to team so you can see what they're seeing uh, and use that to factor into your next steps as a team. Bottom line, I'm very excited that our soldiers are beginning, going to be getting uh, a more advanced capability. It's long overdue and they definitely deserve it. But we can't be complacent about owning the night. We, that gap, that gap is rapidly closing between our capabilities, our superiority, our ability to dominate the night, and what our enemies can do, what they can get their hands on. So we need to be relentlessly aggressive about innovating in this terrain. Our soldiers deserve the very best. All of our warfighters deserve the very best. And we must continue to own the night. Stay protected and informed with the GuardLine Outdoor Motion Alert System. The wireless sensor detects motion and instantly notifies you whenever a person or vehicle enters your property. Setup is easy. Simply install the batteries, pair with the receiver, and place the sensor anywhere around your property that needs protection. GuardLine goes well beyond home security and helps make your life easier in so many ways. You'll know when the delivery driver is coming up your driveway, so you won't have to drop everything and rush to the door. Get advanced notifications when the carpool is pulling up, so that you can have a few extra moments to get the kids ready in time. The GuardLine Motion Alert is a fully expandable system. Add up to 16 sensors to detect motion in different areas around your property, with a wireless range up to a quarter mile. You can also add an unlimited number of receivers around your home, workshop, or garage to alert you wherever you are. Unexpected visitors suddenly at your door and ringing your doorbell can be extremely annoying. 
With GuardLine, you'll get a heads up when someone is approaching so that you can finish whatever you're doing before they arrive at your door. GuardLine can notify you if your kids are playing too close to the pool or in other areas they're not supposed to be in. Get notified instantly when your dog sneaks out of the house or if animals are roaming in areas of your property where they shouldn't be. You'll know exactly when your teenager comes home safely or if there's a visitor walking around your property late at night. With over 30 melodies to choose from, you can select a unique melody for each sensor around your property. You can adjust the volume so your notifications are as loud or as quiet as you need them to be. Stay protected and informed by purchasing the GuardLine Wireless Motion Alert today. Here we go with a burglar literally slithering into a smoke shop in Houston. Thought I've seen it all, guys. All right. He broke into the store by crawling on the floor that way to try to avoid setting off the motion detectors. Still caught on camera, though. Come on, guy. Oh, no. <laughs> Owners of the smoke and glass shop say this guy knew what he was doing when he broke in. I guess he was successful. Yeah, he broke in through the window, they say, which did not have bars on it. But the owners have changed that since then. And they say whatever he's doing now, he came back 20 minutes later, eventually taking about a thousand bucks in merchandise and cash and causing quite a bit of damage along the way. So they have this picture That's of his sneer. face. Oof. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think Joe used the word slithering. And yeah, if you have a slithery personality, then it makes sense that you're a slithery little snake trying to crawl on the floor and get some things that aren't yours. You they look like everyday objects, a lamp, a clock radio, an iPod docking station. But when you look closer, they have hidden cameras inside, tiny, unnoticeable. Mm -hmm. The camera lens is right here, and it's usually pointing up. And I have no idea that there's a camera there. There's nothing about this that suggests anything is videoing me. They can provide an extra layer of security. The ones that, that tell me what they're doing with the cameras are going to be the people that are wanting to either keep an eye on their sitter, their nanny. And we've all seen how hidden cameras can help the good guys in movies like Mission Impossible. There's a camera built right into the bridge. Whatever you see, it sees, and then it transmits it back here. But some end up where they shouldn't be. I recently heard one that um, the guy had a pin camera that he got that's, well, I guess it was motion activated. He set it up in a gym bag and took it in, I think, maybe in YMCA or mm -hmm. something. They're relatively affordable. These cost a few hundred bucks, and technology is making smaller and more sophisticated ones all the time. Some even broadcast their video wirelessly over the Internet. So how can you tell if there's a hidden camera where you are? Technology can help with that, too. This is actually a low-cost uh, camera finder. Private investigator Brian Curry runs a spy shop near Atlanta. He sells the cameras, but he also helps people watch out for them. I'm seeing a big, bright red blinking dot right there, and it's telling me there's a camera on me. Some more sophisticated detectors can even seek out wireless camera signals. You can see it's actually scanning the frequencies. And so what we're right seeing here is picking up all these lots of different cameras in here? Well, yeah, it's pulling up. That's going to be the flower pot camera that we had on so earlier. It's technology versus technology, potentially giving people the tools to invade your privacy, but also giving you a chance to catch them. End of privacy. I, I have to tell you, I'm not that uneasy with cameras yeah, being all over the place. Right now. By the way, look where we are. We're surrounded by cameras right now, but we're used to this. I mean, this is this is our reality. This is some kind of a control room. This is like mission control. Look over here. See, zoom in over there. Spy cam one. Wow. Spy cam two. Spy cam three. Sky. I'm. This this is our life, right? Is this legal? Here's the thing. I mean, I assume when the police do it, it's legal, but I guess some people don't even make that assumption. Well, actually, I mean, a lot of these, these can be illegal, and you need to protect yourself that way, too. Right. There are different laws in different states. There's something called expected privacy. Basically, right. if you have a reasonable expectation of privacy right. in some place, but like a changing room, like you mentioned, obviously there shouldn't be a camera there. So check your state laws, and there are things you can do about it if you've been violated that way. Yeah. All right. Uh, and, and have we got jamming devices or things like that we can use? Yeah, there's jamming devices as well. There are. So you've got these detectors that'll beep, that'll vibrate, that'll show you what the images are. Are, and there are other kinds as well that you can go if you want to get more sophisticated right. that sometimes can actually get in the way of those images as well. So there's ways to protect yourself, but you have to be suspicious in the first place. And that's the key. you got to think, ooh, I think I'm, you know, it's not just going to automatically show up because these things blend in with everything else. So you just got to get one of these devices, check it out, and what see if you're just there. not naturally suspicious? It's not that suspicious a guy. Well, most people aren't naturally suspicious. That's the problem. why they become susceptible. That's why you're here. I'm not making you paranoid, but those of you who are, it's now this is advice end for you too. of privacy. Oh, Lord. I should have been the voice for that. Good to see you. We should both talk back. You're awfully tall.
I know. He wants me to go like this one more. That would be much better, right? Just so uncomfortable. No, 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 better. That's better. If you go to a shot like that, no one knows the difference. Now with that popular doorbell app that a family says helped save their lives, waking them up when a fire broke out on their porch. ABC Gio Benitez is here with more. And what a fortunate family here. This oh, my is. gosh. Unbelievable, Michael. Good morning. Listen, the fire was about to engulf their home. And believe it or not, they had just removed the smoke detectors because they were repainting the house. So this morning, they're calling this device their unlikely hero. You're watching a homeowner battling a fire at 3.30 a.m. Sunday, just moments after waking up. He struggles. There's nothing more he can do and leaves the fire behind, calling for help. It was horrifying. You just don't know what to expect. Mike Hernandez woke up because of this, his doorbell. You see, his doorbell has a motion detector hooked up to a camera. And when the bright flames triggered it, an app on his phone woke him up. I finally opened up my eyes and looked to my right and... Outside my bedroom window, I just saw um, what looked to be like flames. Hernandez, his fiance, and his brother all made it out of the house safely. It's terrifying, but, you know, uh, we're going to move forward and we're thankful that, you know, it wasn't worse. Doorbell cameras have captured other close calls like these. Your house on fire! Yeah, I know. I'm on my way. Just a couple of weeks ago, a strand of outdoor lights caught fire outside a Tennessee home. The family just getting out in time. Nothing is going to beat the traditional method of a home smoke detector or carbon monoxide detector. The added benefits of having a video presence in your home will aid in early detection. And listen, while the device was probably not intended for this, the makers of that high-tech doorbell, Ring.com, said the device did what it was supposed to do, which is keep families safe with an added security measure. Thank goodness they got out. And they just bought that house. A month ago. Can they you were, believe it? They were doing some remodeling yeah, in the yeah, house. Yeah, they were repainting it. I think I might order that doorbell. That's <laughs> <laughs> an extra level of security. Thank you, Gio. <laughs> Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching. Pretty great to be with you. Also awesome if you're coming home late at night. For your safety, an infrared solar power rechargeable LED system. I love the motion sensing, absolutely awesome. And you can see it's bright enough to illuminate an entire balcony, a yard. I mean, these are seriously bright lights that go on and off or stay on with its weather resistance system based on the mode you choose. The motion sensor is very powerful. Watch, I'm not even 100% in front of it yet, and it has already caught me beautiful bright illumination on your property for your home. This is so good. Unlike the competing knockoffs, the one that I found has 45 LEDs. It's wireless, it's weatherproof, it's waterproof, it's solar, it has a rechargeable battery, it is motion sensor activated. You get more brightness and this covers more area than any of the competing products. One of the top rated lighting brands in the world is behind this product. Firstcoastnews.com is where I have you covered. And until we meet again, happy savings. I'm Matt Granite for First Coast News. All right. Oh. There you go. <laughs> I didn't realize I'd be like totally stretched out loud. And we, we debated on who was going to get which. I said, I'll take a chair. And Nick's like, as soon as I sit down in that sofa, I'm just going to, I mean, it's going to suck me in. It's a comfortable sofa. It was, it was a fun, fun segment, though. It was a fun it was segment. Nice catching up with you. Yes. He was I'll be back tomorrow. You will be back tomorrow. You're going to make a recipe. Yep. Um, and we'll make it tonight and get the 10 second cue. Was from that Jared, was? <laughs> was that a Truck accidents aren't like car accidents, they're different. GMA on the lookout and a big warning about keeping your home safe. Check this out, intruders caught on camera invading houses. So could something like this happen to you? Our safety expert is putting one family's home security to the test and revealing just how easy it can be to break in. Watch as this home security camera captures someone outside ringing a doorbell and moments later a crash. Two intruders are now inside. In this home break-in, the intruders claim to be police. ATV, we got a search warrant. At least one man appears to be carrying a gun. Are you prepared if it happens to you? Jeanette Brady and her husband raised their family in his beautiful home in Williamsburg, Virginia. Yes, you can. 
Security, not exactly the first thing on their minds. All in all, we feel pretty secure here. Secure enough to allow safety and security expert Bill Stanton permission to conduct a test. When I'm looking around the house, I'm looking for vulnerable points. With the Brady's permission, Stanton is testing the security of their home to see if he can break in, just like a common burglar. What jumped out at me, when you went around back, there were many, many points of entry. Front door, side door. But then came the moment, the eureka moment. There was a ladder in the garage that I was gonna use to get into the house. Stanton also uses some technology to help his cause and with the family's explicit permission. I took a GPS and I put it on her car. So this way I could track her. The very next day when Jeanette was out, Stanton put his plan into action. I knew my best shot was on the second story because most people overwhelmingly neglect second and third stories in their home because they don't think anybody's gonna go through the trouble to get up that high. Right now, I'm casing the place. And why is he so calm? Well, remember that GPS he put on Jeanette's car. I see you're on the other side of town. He knows exactly where Jeanette is, and he has plenty of time. This looks expensive. When Jeanette does come home, a surprise she wasn't expecting. Excuse me. I'm gonna give you a B minus on the home, but here was the mistake. The alarm wasn't set, your garage was left open. And what do we have in a garage? A ladder. And I use you got my ladder. I use your ladder to get into your house on the second floor where one door, one entry point was open. I'm in. And safety and security expert Bill Stanton, who you just saw in the piece, is joining us now. So bottom line, what can our viewers take away from this? Well, it's about layering. First, motion detectors in and outside your home. Second up, it's about giving the illusion when you're home, even when you're not, by leaving the TV and lights on. Getting those little lights that go on and off. That's on right, that's okay. right. And then finally, our pets. Man's best friend, unless they're trained, they're just our pets. Right, so don't count on them to keep people like you. <laughs> oh, no, it was great. It was a great demonstration, Bill. Thank you very much. Thank and you. you can get more tips for keeping your home secure at goodmorningamerica.com on Yahoo. Alan Tweedy says his Tesla was keyed by this woman in Colorado right there thanks to nine motion censored cameras that are attached to his vehicle in several strategic places. It was caught on camera. When he noticed the damage, he went straight to the video, filed a police report with it as well. He also posted that video on social media and it is going viral. It really speaks to the, the level of anger for a, a crime like this that so many people are willing to spread it and share the word and try to help us find it because nobody likes this. You know, this is my car, but it could be yours next. So many people have had their cars key or key, you know, cars keyed, right? Well, Tweedy says that he does not recognize the woman right there. He doesn't know why she would do it either. Because the damage, though, is estimated at more than $2,000, police say that woman will likely face felony charges. Tesla does have eight surround cameras that provide 360 degree views standard on their vehicles as well. Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Click the ABC7 logo to subscribe to our Eyewitness News YouTube channel. Amazon engineer calling for Ring to be shut down immediately, he says, citing privacy concerns. The engineer published a post on Medium saying, quote, the privacy issues are not fixable with regulation and there is no balance that can be struck. Ring should be shut down immediately and not brought back. This is, of course, the company that you could, somebody rings your doorbell and you can deal with it from your phone, but it has opened the can of worms on privacy. Where is this video going? Are they giving the ring video to everybody who shows up at your door to local police and others? I mean, this, there's a few privacy issues here, and there's a lot of complicated issues here. I mean, one of the issues, of course, we've seen people taking, uh, hackers getting access <coughs> to people's accounts. And part of that is the person themselves has to be responsible. Use a difficult password. Don't make it easy to guess. But you're right. We have to know, are, what are the, what, do they have deals with law enforcement? What are they going to do 
if uh, if law enforcement requests that. And you know, we've we've seen those issues already with phones. So, you know, there's some precedent for what they might do. I mean, if somebody shows up at your door and that person is questionable from the local police's standpoint, then how does that implicate you? Mm -hmm. It just it just opens the door to all these questions about who shows up at your doorstep. That's the whole thing about uh, technology. There are always these new issues, legal issues that are brought up, and that's why these companies should put it out on the table at the beginning. If you have private deals, put it out there yeah. so you don't get these revelations. People, if they know something, people feel better about it. It's the surprise that really, sh really angers people. Yeah, you're right. Does it? Why do you need a ring? Why do you need one? Is yeah. I, why do you need drop cams all over your house? And why would ever, anybody ever put a camera in their kids' room? Remember the "Hi, this is Santa." That was why scary. Would you ever put a camera in your child's room and then connect that video to the internet and basically not change the password or put in a really weak password? Again, I don't think people do what we would call cost-benefit analysis mm. of the, the the dangers and the risk of installing these cameras. Well, we certainly know now about the vulnerabilities a, a lot more than we did many years ago, but to say this needs to be shut down immediately from an Amazon engineer, pretty aggressive. We're going to talk more about this coming up in the program. We are just getting started this morning. Coming up, fun Who is that? I'm your best friend. As eight-year-old Alyssa LeMay stood in her room, a terrifying voice spoke to her. I'm, I'm Santa Claus. Don't you want to be my best friend? The horrifying sound coming from this ring security camera installed in the child's bedroom, which she shares with her two sisters. I come upstairs and I hear some banging noise. I was like, who is that? For five minutes, the voice taunting the young girl playing strange music. even instructing her to destroy her room. You can mess up your room, you can break your TV, you can do whatever you want. The LeMay family installed the camera just days before the device was apparently hacked. I watched the video and I mean like they could watch them sleeping, they could have watched them changing, I mean they could have seen all kinds of things. This just the latest hack of an in-home security camera. Over the weekend, a Florida family says they were spied on in their living room. Can you bring like a web browser up on your phone and then type in the website that I tell you? No. And earlier this year in Washington state, Stop her call, didn't the, camera. the owner of this Nest camera recorded a hacker harassing her family. <laughs> Shut the Ness did not respond to our request for comment, but Ring says in the Memphis case, their security was not breached, adding hackers often reuse credentials stolen or leaked from one service on other services. To protect your privacy, security experts say you should use a strong and unique password. The longer, the more secure. Change them often and set up two-factor authentication to ensure a hacker has to work twice as hard to break in. Something the LeMay family admits they did not do. I don't know who you are. I'm Santa Claus. This morning, the LeMay family still on edge okay? after the device that was supposed to make them feel safe did anything but. Ring has investigated the incident and is taking appropriate action to remove the hackers from the affected account. They've also contacted other users whose accounts may have been compromised guys. So Miguel, besides that creepy hacker there uh, getting into home security cameras, what about these these other hackers out there and another common home device? Something happened recently. What more do you know about that? Yeah, just last month, the FBI warned that smart TVs are vulnerable to hackers as well, saying that the new technology features can be a gateway for hackers to spy on you in your home. They recommend you familiarize yourself with security settings, change default passwords, and know how to enable and disable the microphones and cameras on your televisions. Guys, it's right. totally, totally creepy. I mean, if the guy hadn't spoken out loud, really? who knows how long he was watching those kids in there. How listening. sicko is that? Yeah. For decades, people haven't thought twice about stepping up to someone's front door and ringing the bell. 
But thanks to the advent of surveillance cameras and the spread of video doorbells, strolling up to someone's door could have implications that nobody would have imagined a decade ago. Somebody's there and they're breaking into my house. Video doorbells started becoming part of the suburban home's arsenal of security tools in the last few years, thanks to an invention originally called the doorbot. Who's there? In 2013, inventor Jamie Siminoff tried to sell his idea on the hit show Shark Tank. Introducing the doorbot, the first ever video doorbell built for the smartphone. The sharks didn't buy it. You can stay in four. But the doorbot became ring, and the company soon skyrocketed in value as consumers so bought in. To create safer neighborhoods for all. In the box, you get the doorbell itself. It looks innocuous enough. A small box with a camera mounted next to the front door. And thanks to online retail giant Amazon's acquisition of the company that makes Ring in 2018, millions of homes around the globe now have one. I love that it does motion detection and night vision. Amazon says the device has helped keep homes safe and secure. Ring's website is full of stories of lost dogs brought home or packages saved from the clutches of thieves all because of the doorbell. This woman stealing packages off their porch. Ring is billed as a smart device, Wi-Fi enabled, allowing users to see, hear, talk to, and record people who come to their door, all controlled through a smartphone or an internet connected device, sparking concerns over both privacy and security. Well, that's fine. If you just want to protect your front door, your whatever, um, I understand that, but this is far broader than that and it's capturing so much personal information without people's consent. Today, privacy and security concerns have become a headache for the company. Legal trouble for Amazon and its Ring cameras. Now, some cities are partnering with Amazon to distribute its Ring cameras at a discount to deter crime. A high-tech way police are trying to keep your holiday packages safe from... Ring and its parent company, Amazon, Ring. continue to fend off allegations that their devices, both doorbell cameras and their newer inside cameras... Who is that? I'm your best friend. ...are violating privacy and aren't secure. I'm Santa Claus. Amazon engineer calling for Ring to be shut down immediately, he says, citing privacy concerns. What you watching? In January 2020, an Amazon engineer took the rare step of speaking out against the device, citing privacy concerns. In a statement posted to the blog site Medium, Max Eliezer said the Ring should be shut down immediately and not brought back. And I can tell you, there has never been greater concern about privacy than there is right now in the last two years. This is Ring. Since the Ring's inception, there have been reports the company shares data collected from the devices with third parties that help manage their data in countries like Ukraine. If you go to their privacy policy and you drill down, there's actually four other agreements that they have with four other partners, which pretty much uh, gives you no expectation of privacy. Ring has also partnered with law enforcement agencies in the United States, allowing agencies access to Ring camera data. I think these belong to you. They do. But Privacy advocates say this is a slippery slope. We have a relationship with the police now. So the, this is just surveillance mounting and it's being disguised as, you know, protecting your home. These concerns prompted the U.S. Senate to issue a letter to Jeff Bezos in late 2019, urging him to reconsider Ring and its practices, saying the American people have a right to know who else is looking at the data they provide to Ring and if that data is secure from hackers. Usually they come with default usernames and passwords. Oftentimes the applications that the products are built upon are not tested for security vulnerabilities, so they get shipped in here with built-in uh, security um, vulnerabilities. Do you know that you're not ever supposed to plug in a USB drive that you find? Kevin Mitnick was once considered one of the world's most infamous hackers. Computer. Doesn't that look like an ordinary charging cable to you? After spending time in prison for hacking, he now advises on cybersecurity, regularly appearing on high-profile shows like Dr. Phil. Yeah, I wonder how this works. He says Ring, like other internet-enabled devices, is highly vulnerable. Because I could turn on the victim's webcam, and now I could spy on you. Well, because there are tons of people out there that use the same username and password for years, they don't change it, or they use it in multiple locations. Mitnick was able to show just how easy it is to find and breach passwords online for not just devices like Ring, but any internet-enabled device. Looking at one of these data breaches and I found 38 passwords. 
These security concerns go beyond just the device, extending to the company's associated social media platform, Neighbors. It's here that users can upload and share video footage from their cameras of suspicious activity prompting concerns over racism and violations of privacy where unsuspecting people out for a walk might have found themselves unwittingly starring in ring captured video footage. Data being captured on social media all the time and used in ways that were never intended. And people don't want to get into a, a, a fight with their neighbor because their cameras, you know, that's probably... Part of the problem is it's affecting social relationships very adversely. For its part, Amazon and Ring are now trying to address some of the concerns and have started issuing patches for vulnerabilities. They're getting a lot faster with patching and remediation. But privacy and security remain concerns and aren't likely to go away anytime soon. Hey, put that down. So for now, experts say if you have a Ring or want one, there are a few things you can do to protect yourself. I, I think probably the, the for the consumer, number one thing is make sure that, um, you know, if you're setting up accounts, have two-factor use strong controls. Uh, don't use, the, don't reuse passwords. Uh, use strong passwords. Don't share your passwords with anyone. In an age where internet connection is part of everyday life, that's good advice for anyone, not just Ring users. Thanks for watching. If you want to stay up to date on all the latest breaking national and international news, be sure to subscribe to our channel, where we also dig into big issues around the world in our weekly series, Global News Explains. Home security cameras meant to keep you safe, but now reports that hackers are breaking into them terrifying families. Will Reeve is here with more. Good morning, Will. Hey, Michael. Good morning. Yeah, they are huge holiday gift, those home security cameras. But for some people whose systems were hacked into and their families messed with, they may have buyer's remorse, or at the very least, they have questions about how something like this could happen. This morning, two families say their ring camera systems were hacked, essentially allowing people into their homes without ever stepping foot inside. In Mississippi, this chilling video from inside Ashley LeMay's home shows her eight-year-old daughter, Alyssa, frantically searching for an invisible intruder. Who is that? I'm your best friend. I'm Santa Claus. You can hear the male voice ask the young girl to destroy her own stuff. You can do whatever you want right now. You can mess up your room. You can break your TV. Alyssa, scared and confused, cries out for help. Mommy! I can't even, like, put into words, like, how violated I feel. And, you know, like, that's, it really is, like, my worst nightmare. I was keeping scared. I was even scared of my room for a few days. I'm still a little bit scared of it. Hello, doggy, doggy, doggy. Come here, doggy. And in Georgia, a stranger hacked into the ring camera in this couple's bedroom. I was terrified. The couple, who has asked to remain unidentified, says they purchased the camera so they could watch their dog while they were at work. But the woman says she was confused on Monday evening after the surveillance light suddenly came on. So I'm texting my boyfriend saying, you know, why are you watching? We're laying down. We're about to go to sleep. He's like, what are you talking about? Just seconds later. I can see you in the bed. Come on, wake the f up. The couple, shaken by the ordeal, reported the incident to Ring. The home security system company releasing this statement. While we are still investigating this issue and are taking appropriate steps to protect our devices based on our investigation, we are able to confirm this incident is in no way related to a breach or compromise of ring security. The LeMay family in Mississippi has since filed a police report. Ring suggests using their two-step verification system, using strong passwords and creating shared users on your account instead of sharing login information all to keep your home a little bit safer, but really scary oh, stuff. Oh, that little girl had to be just frightened. I know. She seems to be handling it okay. Yeah, in the I know. Oof, really Good scary. thing she called for her parents. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Will. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.
In Privacy Watch, the popular doorbell cameras Ring are raising privacy concerns across the country. Ring is owned by Amazon, and a new partnership called the Neighborhood Watch Program has more than 400 law enforcement agencies potentially using the security footage. That means police can have access to customers' videos. For more on this, I want to bring in Alfred Ng. He's a reporter at CNET News. Okay, we heard that. Police can have access to videos. How are they able to access that video and use it? Yeah, so when they partner with Amazon, uh, they get access to something called the law enforcement portal. It's basically the same thing that citizens can get when they go on neighbors, but they have a few more options. So they can request for footage based around an area that they fence off. So if they want to just say, I want to know videos from this neighborhood on this block, they can do that, and then everyone that has a ring camera that lives in that area will get a ping from the police saying, hey, we're looking for footage. They can customize the message to say whatever it wants. And then if people choose so, they can then send the footage to police there. Um, Police have found sometimes when that doesn't work, they will just canvas the neighborhood you know, like they used to, but now they'll walk around looking for ring cameras on people's doorbells. And if they see that, they'll go by and they'll knock on the doors and say, hey, we know you have a ring camera. Can you please give the footage over? But it basically allows them to you know, get videos from an entire neighborhood with just a tap on their phone. But there is consent. A homeowner can say no. Yes, there is consent. Homeowners can say no, and then p the police don't know who is saying no. Um, but they also are able to just subpoena Ring directly. So if they know that there's footage in an area, they can get a warrant signed by a judge, send it to Ring, and the person with that camera would never even know that their footage was taken by the police. That's obviously going to bring us some privacy concerns. What are, are privacy advocates saying about this? The biggest concern for privacy advocates is that this is essentially creating a surveillance network in residential neighborhoods backed by Amazon. So in these residential neighborhoods that used to never have cameras, police, this is kind of a dream come true for them where they can get footage from you know blocks and people's doorsteps where they never really had access to before. Uh, Ring says that customers have complete control over their videos. You kind of debunked a little bit of that. Let's listen to the CEO describe how police are able to gain access to customers' videos. The Ring customer will see a request come up. They can either accept the request or they can opt out of that request and all future requests and the police will never see if they have done that. You mentioned this is a, a sort of a, like a, a digital subpoena, but is it odd that you know a homeowner could have their video taken with a subpoena and not even know? Is there any notification for them? No, there's not really notification for them if it's subpoenaed. So there's notification if they request it through the traditional methods mm -hmm. and they you know go to their doorsteps. But privacy advocates have kind of raised an issue with that too, where you know they say there's consent there, but it's kind of different when a cop is at your door, you know, asking for footage like that. They talk about how you know you act differently when a, when you're driving around a cop, and you know if they're at your doorsteps asking for video footage, even if you don't really want to give it to them, they, they, privacy advocates worry that there could be pressure from you know, law enforcement at your door asking for that kind of thing. And it's one thing if the neighborhood is looking for a porch pirate, somebody stealing Amazon packages mm -hmm. off of your front door, but it leads to the question, is this a slippery slope? Is this, could this be more video that Amazon's going to get? And let's be honest, Amazon's not a benevolent society. Is there any data they're getting for this for their personal use? So Amazon is getting basically $3 a month for every person that signs up for this. So in one case in Indiana, Amazon had donated about uh, $18,000 to the city uh, to give discounts for about 500 cameras. So even if they gave away all those cameras for free, they would make all that money back within a year from the you know, $3 a month for all those cameras. So they are making a good chunk of change on this. It's interesting because people love Ring, but I think once they learn a little bit more, it may raise a couple questions. Alfred Ng, thank you very much. Very interesting story. Hi, I'm Jamie Simonoff, inventor of your Ring video doorbell. At Ring's core is the most advanced motion technology in the world. And now I'd like to give you some tips on how to get the most out of it. Ring uses infrared or IR motion detection in a unique way that allows you to customize the areas, sensitivity, and frequency of how it captures events. IR technology works by seeing heat, which allows us to tell the difference between a person and, say, a tree branch in the wind. When Ring detects movement in the heat signature, it triggers a motion event, which sends an alert to your phone and turns on the Ring for viewing. For those with recording enabled, you can also watch this footage later. If you have a street near your ring, you might notice that cars set off the motion alerts. Cars give off a lot of moving heat. But don't worry, all you have to do is adjust ring sensitivity and exclude areas you don't want to monitor. 
the gray area in the app represents the distance of where a person will trip the motion alert. Because cars are larger, you will have to turn the sensitivity down a bit further from the street in order not to be alerted by them. Once you have the area you want to monitor saved, proceed to the Smart Alerts tab. With Smart Alerts, you can tell our algorithm how sensitive you want it to be. For example, if your kids play soccer in front of the house for a few hours, how many alerts do you want to get? A setting of light would give you one, standard two, and frequent would create a bunch. We recommend starting at standard and adjust as you start getting acquainted with the feature. Ring's advanced motion detection lets you be in control of monitoring your front door. Just one more way with Ring, you are always home. As I approached the baby's room and stood outside, I was shocked to hear a deep manly voice talking to my seven-month-year-old son. My blood ran cold. Arjun Sood was standing outside his son Oliver's door Sunday when he heard that voice. He burst in, the voice stopped. He and his wife chalked it up to baby monitor interference. But once downstairs... Um, and I was standing right about here. They heard the voice again. Who is this? An unseen intruder talking to them through their Nest security camera using obscenities, including the N-word. Asking me, you know, why I'm looking at him because he saw obviously that I was looking back um, and continuing to taunt me. It was terrifying. Sood says once his shock subsided, oh. he composed himself enough to record part of the ominous exchange. You're all crazy, guys. Go kill yourselves. Bye. What's that? Sood believes the hacker also turned their upstairs thermostat to 90 degrees, noticing that the same night. <laughs> A potential danger to their baby. And then they mess with our thermostat? Why, who does that? Again, who does that? The Suds unplugged their interior cameras, called police, and soon after, Nest itself. And then they said, well, you should have used a unique password and two-factor authentication, and if you did, you know, that would be that. Sood's been using Nest for years, sinking thousands of dollars into the system to help secure his home. Five outside, six outside, seven outside. He now questions Nest security. And that's why when I called Nest and I said, how long has this been going on for? How long has someone kind of been watching us? We don't know. We can't tell you. We don't have the logs. Extremely disturbing, he says, considering there are cameras all over their home, with no indication someone outside might be watching, except on two cameras, where a blue light clicks on when someone talks. Until they actually communicate with you, they could be in here watching as we are doing right now. Mm -hmm. And there is no difference. You, you can't tell. Sood says his trust in Nest is shattered. He wants to return the system. That? Nest refused. What I'm truly upset about, other than the obvious, is that it seems like the executive leadership at Nest yes, I'm here. fell asleep at the wheel. Sood and his wife Jessica say they were unaware double factor authentication was even available, having never received any information. We reached out to Ness tonight, but have not received a response. In the newsroom, Dana Kozlov, CBS2 News. Erica? Uh, understandably terrifying. Yeah. Thank you, Dana. We often show you criminals caught on doorbell cameras. But this time, a stranger was caught doing an act of kindness. Now one shirts man is hoping to find this honest neighbor. Eyewitness News reporter Vanessa Croy explains how this good deed didn't go unnoticed. Just, uh, I walked up to my door and I was fixing to put the coat in my lock and the wallet was sitting right there. Tony Boyce had been looking everywhere. I had to go to the bank and I couldn't do any banking without my, with my ID. A missing wallet. So I searched high and low, I couldn't find it. I was like, oh my gosh, I'll go back to the house one more time and look for it. And then there it was. I saw a gentleman walking his dogs past here. He kind of stopped and looked in my driveway, watched him walk over to it. He kind of picked it up and looked at it and then set it by my door. Caught on video, the honest dog walker who brought it back. I had a lot of money in it. It's a blessing. And now Boyce is hoping he can find this neighbor in shining armor. It was kind of a tearjerker at first just to know somebody went out of their way to make sure you know, it got returned to its rival owners. Boy said he bought the door camera to catch a criminal. When you pull up those videos all the time, it's somebody, you know, it's a fight or somebody taking a package. 
But now he's hoping that video will help catch a caring citizen. Yeah, I'd love to shake his hand. And offer a token of gratitude to the good soul who saved the day. Thank him for being such a good-hearted person. And restore his faith in humanity. It says a lot about the character of people. There's still good, still good people out there. I know we see a lot of bad stuff on the news a lot of the time. And you hear the bad stories, but it's really heartening to know that, that there's people like that still out there. Vanessa joins us live tonight. Vanessa, how has been trying to track down this good neighbor? Well, Deb, Tony posted this video on his neighborhood Facebook page in hopes of tracking this man down because he just wants to say thank you. But Tony said he hasn't had any luck yet. So if you know this man, click on the story on our website at kins5.com and send us a note. We'd love to help Tony connect with this good neighbor. Deb. Vanessa, thank you so much for that uplifting story. For new mom Ellen Rigney, Baby Topper was her favorite show. Dad Nathan called it her CCTV. I would have the Nest Cam pulled up on the iPad over there so that I could see him from every angle. So they were terrified to hear a man's voice caught on their Nest Cam coming from the baby's nursery. We heard um, sexual expletives being said in his room. He turned that camera on and told us, I'm going to kidnap your baby, I'm in your baby's room. They raced to the infant's room to find Topper alone sleeping soundly. The Rigneys had been hacked, and they're not the only ones. The Dirkholtz oh, family in Texas says a stranger spoke to their nanny through the baby cam. Security experts warn Wi-Fi baby monitors are vulnerable to online intruders. The Rigneys filed a police report, but the hacker will likely never be found. Nest is blaming the hack on users' poor password security and is alerting affected consumers to reset their passwords and set up two-factor authentication. It makes you feel um, invaded and uncomfortable. <laughs> High-tech monitors hijacked. Another reason for okay. parents, restless nights. Miguel Almaguer, NBC News. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching. I want to give a shout out right now to ADT, Stocks of the Home Security Company, now up almost 63%. So pairing just to some of the gains that they had made a little bit earlier, they had soared as high as 80% in the pre-market. And that's after news that Google has invested nearly half a billion into the company. So for more on this, we're joined now by Yahoo Finance's tech expert, Dan Howley. Hey, Dan. Hey, yes. So what's going on here is Google is investing this $450 million dollars into ADT to get a 6.6% stake. What they're going to get is Class B shares. Uh, so that means they're not going to have any voting rights uh, for the company. But a lot of what this has to do with is integrating ADT into Google's Nest line of products. Uh, this is essentially something that uh, would allow them to have access to ADT's call centers and services, uh, putting that together with Nest products. Nest already offers, by the way, some home security features uh, via the Nest Protect. Uh, that is a kind of a bundle that you can get where you'll get notifications if someone sets off a sensor uh, for your windows, your doors, uh, there's motion sensors that you can have uh, throughout your home. So it kind of seems like a, a natural uh, put together here for the two companies, uh, at least for the, the investment that Google is making. But it'll be interesting to see how regulators look at this just because this is putting, you know, a, a new arm into Google almost where they're getting this 6.6% uh, stake and then giving uh, them the ability to stretch out into the uh, security and home automation space even more so as regulators are looking at Google to see if it is abusing uh, its market power in terms of advertising and search. So they might not be moving in that direction, but they're moving into another direction. I think it's just going to bring more uh, kind of speculation as to what the future holds as far as legal outcomes for Google. All right, and we'll definitely be watching. Thanks so much, Dan. Story, Aaron, thank you. Our Now Hiring segment aims to connect employers to their potential new hires during this pandemic. And we spoke with a company, company executives at ADT Security who say they have plenty of jobs and they are now hiring. 
ADT Security Services is a well-known home monitoring and security company with a very big presence across North Texas, specifically in Irving. Michael Taylor, the company's onboarding officer, spoke to us about the more than 150 jobs they are currently looking to fill. A couple of entry-level positions um, in our emergency dispatch operator, our call monitoring centers. Uh, we have some customer service positions open as well. Um, and we also have some positions in frontline leadership. Company higher-ups say the need for the service has increased during the pandemic because of a spike in burglaries and crimes being committed across the U.S. and here in North Texas. The jobs are all full-time and they offer competitive pay with lower-entry jobs starting their pay in the high teens per hour. They also come along with a full list of benefits. Well, we're looking for someone who's really going to be invested in ADT, right? And so, as we know, there are a lot of people out there pivoting from one career to us. Um, we want to make sure that we're getting people in who can adapt to our environment. Taylor says they'll train those who are pivoting in their careers and are looking for gainful employment right now. If you get the right candidate right now, how quickly can you get them hired on? I can get them hired within 24 to 48 hours. That quickly? That quickly. Wow, that's that awesome. Quickly. Yeah. ADT does want applicants to know they'll need to apply online and they will have to submit to a criminal background check and a drug screening. We help save lives for a living, so we take what we do very seriously. And so we built trust into our customers and they expect the same from us. All right, folks, if you are new to the now hiring segment, we have made it extremely easy for you to find all of these employers that are offering work right now. All you have to do is go to our website, cbsdfw.com. You're going to want to look for this logo, click on it. It's about halfway down the home page, and that'll take you to a second page full of all of the employers that we have been featuring in our now hiring segment. We wish you all the best of luck. I'm Ken Molestina, CBS 11 News. Be on the lookout for a security system scam that can rob your pocketbooks and steal your peace of mind. Tonight, one major home security company is signaling a big alert to homeowners here. News Channel 5's Michelle Quesada is live in Fort Pierce to explain. Michelle. Michael, it starts off with just a knock on your door. The scammers see what security system sign you have outside of your home and tell you they're working for that company. After selling you some pretty convincing lies, they could leave your home and your wallet vulnerable. We put these up. Carrie Gomez's DEVCON sign lets criminals know her home is secured. I have two kids, so I, you know, I need a security system. Problem is, it also made her a scam victim. We're walking around door to door um, for our customers who have ADT to upgrade for you for free. That's the lie scammers fed to her. She's one of tens of thousands of victims door to door sales scammers target every year. I decided to call ADT and they were like, no, they weren't with us. Luckily, she was within the three-day right of rescission to cancel the new contract she signed. If not, she would have had to still pay out her ADT contract plus this new contract. We would have had to pay for all the extra stuff that they were installing that they said was for free. And the installation of new equipment means your current company is no longer monitoring you. It's scary. David Bleich is an attorney for ADT. He says the company has seen an increase in complaints and lawsuits are being filed. We know that there are some bad actors, but we also know there's some bad acting companies. See, I'm trying to find out if it's her. This video was part of evidence in a settled lawsuit. The acting salesman is teaching other employees to lie to customers and tell them they are upgrading their equipment. I'm to the point where I'm going to be putting signs on my door that says no soliciting. Gomez learned her lesson in time. ADT is asking customers to stay alert and be skeptical. The company is actually offering a $5,000 reward to anyone who lawfully obtains evidence of a company engaging in this type of deceptive training. Now, they want you to make sure anyone who comes to your door provides photo ID, ask them for proof that they work for the company they say they do. And if you've been scammed or almost scammed, ADT wants you to report that to your security company, to the police, and to the att attorney general's office. Reporting live tonight, Michelle Casada, WPTV News Channel 5. Hey, everyone, welcome to the ADT Smart and Secure Home. Drew are going to walk you through a house filled with the latest in smart home security from ADT. Come on in. ADT's command panel lets you control your secure smart home like lights, locks, thermostat, and arming and disarming the system, and contacts 24-7 monitoring agents if tampered with. Use your panel to control your lights. You can dim smart lights even if your lamp doesn't come with a dimmer. This works for interior and exterior lights. Create automations and custom schedules to turn your smart light bulbs on and off. 
This is great for nighttime vacations or if you just want to mess with your brother. With geofencing, you'll receive an alert if you leave a garage door or window open or if your brother leaves the front door open. I was testing you. We're good. If you love the control you have with the ADT command panel inside your home, you can also get the same control with the ADT app outside your home. What he said. While you're home or remote, arm and disarm your system, unlock or lock your doors, manage the temperature in your home, never again arrive to a dark home. Makes my life easy. Works with voice assistant too. Yo, turn my lights off. Tell me you are not looking at yourself in the cameras. Yes, I am, because the ADT indoor-outdoor cameras, it gives me HD quality even in dark and low lights. And it'll send you video clips when it senses motion. Yes, oh, motion, like this? That's a lot of motion. Alexa Guard can help enhance your ADT system when you're away from home. With an Echo Dot, it provides audio files from alarm events like when a carbon monoxide detector or fire detector go off. A notification goes to homeowners as well as ADT monitoring professionals. Never get locked out again via code on the lock or through your phone using the ADT app. Simple as that. This is great for family and friends because you can remotely lock them out or let them in. Depends how much you like them. The ADT video doorbell camera takes crystal clear HD images, not distorted. You can view the images live from anywhere, all within the ADT app. Come on, let me in. It can also record footage so that you can go back and check the feed. Two-way audio is great because you can talk through the app in real time. Drew, there's something in your teeth. And one big advantage with ADT is that you can check that your door is locked and your system's armed all in one app if you see a suspicious visitor. I'm telling mom. ADT Go, security you can take with you outside the four walls of your home. Location sharing so you can set up private maps for your family. Real-time GPS location data. Notifications when your family members arrive at their destinations. Driver safety with automatic crash detection and emergency response. Safe driving reports like texting or heartbreaking. Your teenagers will hate you. ADT Go also has an SOS button for emergencies when you're away from home. And it's backed by 24-7 monitoring. From the most trusted name in security, ADT. Whew, what a day. We squeezed in a lot. Yeah, it was a long day because we had a lot of great features to talk about. That's right. But it's official. I think I can say it. Do it. That's a wrap. Woo! ADT, massage my back. Well, that doesn't exist yet, but oh, okay. I wish it did. People install security cameras to increase that feeling of safety, but what happens when your cameras become compromised? Sadly, it happens. Kimberly Speakman spoke to an expert to figure out some of the steps you can take to prevent your security systems from getting hacked. It's tonight's top story. Experts say any type of surveillance camera can be prone to getting hacked. Uh, the idea of surveillance cameras um, just kind of leaves networks open um, in general. Just last week, one Washington family had their Nest security cameras compromised. Strangers were able to watch the family as they did their daily routines. They apparently got access to the camera after getting a hold of one of the family members' passwords from a third party. Experts recommend changing your passwords, make, being very fre uh, frequent with changing your passwords, um, always updating things. They suggest using different passwords for every system that you have to log into, and nothing simple like one, two, three, four. They suggest using something that means a lot to you so that you'll remember it when you have to log in. They say another thing you have to secure is your internet connection by updating it and again changing your password regularly. While being connected to the internet gives you the convenience of checking your cameras remotely, Ikeda says you're safer without it. Do not hook it up to the network where you guys can view it on the phone or computer because once you hook it up to the network, it's live, you know, I mean, anyone could potentially hack in. Ingersoll says to especially monitor cameras connected to the internet that have been bought and aren't installed by security professionals. Most of these are like cloud-based streams. Your box is sending a continual signal to some cloud server, and then you're logging into it. If that server gets jeopardized, then other people have access to the streams that your box is sending. Kimberly Speakman, KHON 2 News. Hello, hello. 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 H
Well, let's see how long it uh, takes you to find me. Thank you very much. Let's go.我们可以追溯到说出现每一张脸都可以对应说他的身份证Well, here we are then. I've just got out of the car close to the city centre and for the purposes of this exercise, the plan is for me to start walking in the direction of the bus station. My image has already been flagged to the authorities as a suspect and in theory, it should only be a matter of time. So already on this bridge, I can see one, two, three CCTV cameras. Of course, there's no point hiding from them. Just keep on walking. Uh -oh. Right behind me, you can see uh, just over, over my left shoulder there. Hello, guys. I've been expecting you. Oh, maybe these guys aren't in on the joke. If you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to fear. Do 有every association，was do develop weapons. Um, I think there are reasons that um, technology keep advancing, like artificial intelligence. It can be applied to do a lot of good things.
Gene Wang can keep an eye on his dog and kids, even when he's not at home. But he didn't have to pay for a pricey home security system with extra cameras and hardware. Instead, he turned a used iPad into a security camera and monitors the activity on his iPhone with a free app called Presence, which Wang developed at his company, People Power. So what we're doing is we're breathing new life into these old devices and making them useful so that you can kind of have your eyes and ears at home even when you're away. Users must download the Presence app onto two devices. One serves as a camera and the other monitors the action. You need a constant Wi-Fi connection and power source. But as long as the camera is working, the phone does not need to be in pristine condition. Let me check in on my kids. People are using it for kid tracking, pet cams, elderly cams. So if you have an elderly relative you're worried about and you don't get to see them all the time. Wayne got the idea after his mother's home was burglarized and he realized a nice security system would run him around $1,800 and a monthly service charge. The app also allows for two-way audio and video communication. Sally, how you doing? The app can also detect motion, like walking through a door. The camera will record a five-second video clip of the action and then send that clip directly to your email. Schools have even reached out to PeoplePower to use the setup for added security. There's actually this one uh, school district in particular who has voted to go out and ask the parents to donate their old iPhones and so on to set up these campus-wide security systems to improve the safety of our kids. PeoplePower is working to expand the app's capabilities so it can control more things around your home, like a radio-controlled thermostat and specialized electric plugs to control energy consumption. In San Francisco, I'm Kara Suboy, CNET.com for CBS News. To another home invasion, this one caught not just on one camera, but on 16. The scary moment, a San Jose woman watched an alleged intruder enter her home while she was in it. The whole thing playing out on her cell phone. ABC's Aditi Roy has more. This morning, a brazen burglar caught every step of the way on 16 surveillance cameras. Take a look at the intruder early Tuesday morning, checking out a window of this home in San Jose, California. On the other side, homeowner Heidi Casada, alone, wakes up from the rustling outside. I was just petrified. She reaches for her phone, opens up this app, and looks at the video from her four surveillance cameras in horror. The burglar just steps away. I called 911 and stayed quiet because I thought they could get here and hopefully catch him. While she's on the phone, watch as the burglar gloves up and pops the lock on this sliding door to get inside. Look at how calmly he walks through. The security alarm sounds off, but the burglar, unfazed, look at him walking through Casada's home. I can hear him rattling around, and I'm telling 911 he's in the room next to me. What was going through your mind? Oh, I, I, I couldn't, I was just trying not to hyperventilate, and I was trying to whisper, mm -hmm. and I was trying to tell them, I just kept telling him, please hurry, please hurry. He then goes for the master bedroom door. I can hear him wiggle the doorknob. He pushes the door hard. I came out of my closet at that point and started banging on the door from the inside, yelling at him, saying, get out of here, the police are coming, they're gonna shoot you. As she yells, watch him swing back, then flee out of the home and over the fence. One of the neighbor's 12 cameras capturing him escaping on a skateboard. Police arriving 14 minutes after Casada called 911. This morning, the intruder, still at large, his face now splashed all over social media. Oh, they'll find him. There's enough social media coverage now. Somebody will know him. Somebody will recognize him. For Good Morning America, Aditi Roy, ABC News, San Jose, California. Good morning. A high-tech partnership getting results. Hundreds of police agencies are working with homeowners who have doorbell cameras to solve crimes. Cherokee County deputies are the latest to get on board with this, and that's where Channel 2's Lauren Posen is live. Lauren, there are some privacy concerns with this. And police want to alleviate those concerns. Now, this morning, we are inside one of the developments that registered their security cameras, and you can see there's a couple of them right behind me here outside of the clubhouse.
We take our security seriously. There's nearly 15 cameras throughout this Canton neighborhood. Around our recreation areas, the entrance, they're monitored. Ed Provost is part of the Homeowners Association. He says there was no hesitation to register those cameras with the sheriff's office new program called CSO Camera Connect. Everyone is concerned about security. Uh, you hope it's a it's a umbrella that when carried is never opened, but sometimes you got to open it. Let's say something happens here on the tennis courts. Well, see that camera over there? It's registered with the sheriff's office. That means they'll be able to access the footage. An investigator will reach out to you and say, hey, you know, between these times on this date, would you mind checking your camera to see if by chance you caught the suspect or their vehicle on camera? The goal of the new partnership is to have another resource to track down criminals. All the registered cameras locations are mapped out, so if a crime happens in a particular area, Area, police know where there could be footage. This isn't a program where we have access to your cameras and we're looking and, and seeing what your camera is looking at. So far, over 200 people and business owners have signed up. It might not help you, but the police might be able to help what happens to a neighbor or someone else. And we've told you about other departments that have similar programs, including in DeKalb in Gwinnett County. But let us know what you think about the program. Head over to our Facebook page and post your comment under the story. Let's talk about who's watching you. High tech break and enter. Attention, John and Peter. Your home has been hacked. What you need to know to beat the bad guys. This is your marketplace. We're traveling to a small town in southern Ontario to deliver some disturbing news. That's our Prius. Is it? A family who lives here is being watched by the whole world, and they don't know it. Here they are, renovating their front porch. And here again, sharing more intimate moments on the back deck. Captured by their own security cameras and broadcast over the internet for all to see. Anyone can keep an eye on their comings and goings. That's how we've tracked them down, through their license plate. You can even watch on their cameras as we arrive to alert them to what we found. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good, thanks. Good. You? Are you the homeowner? I am. My name is Magda. I'm with uh, the CBC. Mm -hmm. We're kind of here for a strange reason. It, uh, it has to do with your security cameras. Okay. I don't know if you realize this, but those cameras are actually broadcasting on the internet. Really? Yeah. So How would you know? That's, that's what brought us here, actually. We want to show you what we found. Really? Yeah, we can show you what's happening right now. Wow. OK. See that right there? And you could just get that. That's right, yeah. This is what's going on right now. What do you think about that? No, I don't like that at all. You had no idea that this was possible? No. How long have you had those cameras up? Six months, maybe. Six months. Yeah. And where did you get them? Uh, through Amazon. I ordered them. You got just them? Just online. Okay. Just, uh, they were just a plug and play system, so it was easy, no wires. Um, everything was wireless through your internet, so mm -hmm. I didn't realize that anyone could have access to that. In truth, everyone could have access to that on this website that searches out and shows security cameras that are using default password settings. Toronto, Chatham, Medicine Hat. We've got a house here in Mississauga. Over here we have one in Vancouver. There are tens of thousands of them streaming from across Canada and around the world. And people don't know that these cameras 
can be accessed by anybody. The website says it's just trying to expose security issues, but these homeowners are the ones being exposed. Look at this. They're putting together a puzzle. I can almost see. <laughs> wow. Clothes on the chair. Wait a second. Oh my gosh. I can see her. Over the next several weeks, we try to figure out where exactly these people live so we can warn them. And as we search for clues, we find more private moments. By the pool, in the kitchen, even upstairs near their bedrooms. Moments not meant for public viewing. And then one day. So we've been looking for clues, and today we got a hit. You see this right here? This is the first time that we've been able to make out a license plate. By searching the license plate and various websites, we narrow it down to an address. But is it the right one? There's a pole here. You can see the light pole. Let's go back to the video. And you can see this here, which seems to match the Google Maps street view of this address. We're going to their house. We're going to tell them what we've been seeing and what other people can see. We're heading down the highway days later when we think someone's home. And once again, our arrival is being broadcast over the internet. Hi. Hi. I'm Makta with the CBC. Yes. And um, the reason why I'm here, it has to do with your security cameras. I don't know if you realize this, but those security cameras are actually broadcasting on the internet. No, I didn't know that. The homeowner wants his identity protected, even though his life has already been watched around the world. The We're about to show him how. It's being shown right now. You, you can see here it's a bit of a delay, but then I'm just going to... Well, that's no good. Let's see, that's us right there. Mm -hmm. And these are your, your cameras. Did you ever think that something like this no. was possible? No. And how, how long have you had these cameras? February. Okay. Can I ask, what, what, why did you think of getting them and setting them up around the home? Or I have teenage kids, I want to see what's going on in my home. Got it. Especially when I'm away, traveling. So you, you got them for the safety of your family? Yeah. And you never thought something like this would be that anybody could just... No. ...look into your house? No. He struggles to process the information. Steps he's taken for security may actually be causing harm. And what exactly have people seen? When I have a pool, I come in and out and this and that. And you know, if my kids aren't around, I don't need to change or whatever. I just, you know, it's just privacy's blown already. So I don't know how you make that right. How are you going to have the, the conversation with your family about this? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's quite upsetting and disturbing. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. That's the privacy of my home being invaded, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing that these cameras are playing for anyone to watch, if we figured it out, it doesn't take much for anyone else to figure it out. Well, I'll be disconnecting them as soon as I go back in. So how did the privacy of these homeowners get so violated? We do more digging. We have a delivery. Professional video security. This camera system is the same type used by both families. It's sold by a company called O6. Let's get these positioned so we can spy on you while you work. Oh, that just sounds great. <laughs> OK, so what's this one? This one's the bottom right. 
setup is relatively easy. But when it comes to connecting it to the internet, the problem becomes clear. The system does not require you to set a password. The default factory setting password is empty. This means you do not need to fill out a password. Username admin. That means once it goes online, other people could access your cameras too. And there are no warnings. OK, All that's right. the problem. We ask O6 why it doesn't insist on a password, like some other companies do. But they wouldn't answer our questions. More smart home secrets. And testing some of the top brands Kind of like having the different security cameras so you know what's going on. Will this family pass a home hack attack? Get more Marketplace. Sign up for our weekly newsletter, cbc.ca slash marketplace. This is your Marketplace. Across Canada, Homes are being transformed by so-called smart devices that promise to make things more convenient and more secure. It's automated control of everything from our lights and locks to our TVs and temperature. Alexa, set the thermostat to 23. Okay. Alexa, kitchen light on. Okay. In Canada alone, more than 100 million of these devices are now connected to the internet. But there's a downside. Many people don't know how to secure their smart devices, allowing hackers and pranksters to invade their homes and their privacy. What was that? This woman is terrified by the 21st century version of a crank call. I can hear you. Whoever's controlling her camera can also communicate with her. <laughs> Even little babies fall victim. Traumatized at night by someone who's taken control of the baby monitor. The dark side of this new technology might not occur to most. Yeah, we got that's one of these the indoor. Hmm. Joanna Kenwood and Peter Urima think smart devices are both cool and convenient. I love it. Okay. I think it just makes life so much easier. But they're looking for security, too. And that's why I kind of like having the different security cameras, so you know what's going on. So they're careful to pick top brands that promise security as a priority. Cameras okay. by Nest and a new lock by Schlage for the front door. It's connected to a central hub made by Wink. All of the devices are controlled by apps on their phones or by their Amazon personal assistant. Thermostat is off. Yeah, I'd want to get more of them, just spread them out a little bit more so we can actually walk throughout the house and have the different ones going. But could devices like these actually make us more vulnerable? We're about to find out. Park, park right here. Yeah, just park this right van here. is carrying three white hat hackers. Arseni, Chris, and Michael work for a company called Scalar. Capture the, uh, the wireless packets. Businesses hire them to test and their security, to find here. weaknesses before the bad guys do. There we go. Joanna and Peter have agreed to let these guys do whatever it takes to hack their home. OK. It isn't long before they figure out a key component. There we go. There it is, guys. Ooh. Nice. They crack the password to the home's Wi-Fi network. Free Wi-Fi, everyone, now and then discover it's the same password used by Peter to control the thermostat. All right, connected. But to get full control, they decide they need Joanna's password too. 
Back at headquarters, they create a phishing email. It's a fake, designed to trick Joanna into revealing her password. Oh, she has opened it. Oh, message has been opened. If she clicks on the link they sent, they'll be able to control just about every smart device in her house. The waiting game doesn't last long. Oh, here we go. We got credentials. All right, let's test them. Awesome. And just like that, they are ready to hack the home. You can only see us when we want you to. Don't let this happen to you. That's pretty terrifying that they're able to get into to so many devices. How to fight back against a home hack. Do you have a story you want us to investigate? Write to us, marketplace at cbc.ca. This is your marketplace. We're inside a home in Oakville, Ontario, filled with smart devices. What is it that you guys like about having these smart devices? Convenience. Uh, just some of the simpler things, your hands are full, you need a light on, or... I like the security. I like being at work and having the notifications going off and knowing what's going on at my house while I'm away from it. But outside, three guys in a van who have a point to prove about that security. They're going to try to hack it. So it's good to go. Okay, so let's let's take a look. Let's see what we have in here. Do you guys have a favorite device? That's a good question. I'm gonna say it's probably the inside camera, just so I can see the doggies and see what's going on. Okay. <laughs> what's going on? Did you guys see that just now? Attention, John and Peter. Your home is being hacked. Well, that's surprising. Yeah. <laughs> Expect that. No, no, not no. the Nest camera. Because <laughs> they usually, you know, they're supposed to be at the top of the line, most secure out there. He just talked to you through that. I know. <laughs> and did you see what was going on behind us? Yeah. It's time to turn off the heat. Check your thermostat. Well, our AC just been put up to 32 degrees. <laughs> 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 so it's going to get hot here. <laughs> so what do you think about that? That's pretty terrifying that they're able to get into to so many devices, especially, I'd say more so the, the living room camera, I think. Because that's, you know, it's our home, it's the inside. We have a child in here, and to know that someone can get into it. Outside in the van, they're not done yet. Things are about to get even more disturbing. As our hackers show some real damage they can do when they target this personal assistant. Alexa, 4K TV. I've added Samsung 4K TV to your shopping list. Now, what if someone could actually do that? Now, I also wonder if they have access to my full Amazon account, which has my credit cards, my bank card. <laughs> Everything's on there. And what if they do? I guess I'm going to be really broke soon. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of money. <laughs> Did you guys? Do you want to see what's going on outside? Have a look at your security camera. What's going on? Mm -hmm. Doesn't want to load up right. Oh, no, there oh, it goes. Offline. Your camera's offline. Yep. So if I was at work and someone was coming on the property, I would have no idea. You can only see us when we want you to. And this time is now. So he said, you can only see us when we want you to see us. That's so creepy. You said it's creepy, why? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> that's her front door lock. That's her front door lock, <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I'd say that one's the more troubling of any of them. And unlocking. <laughs> <laughs> I feel unsecure now. <laughs> Hi, I'm just letting myself in. My name is Arseni, and we've just compromised your house. Just Sorry, unlocked guys. your <laughs> yep. your lock and walked in here. No. How are you guys feeling right now? To be honest, a little terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Um, I'm gonna say, especially if I'm not around, we do have animals and we do care about their well-being. And you know, we don't have the fanciest things, but you know, you just feel invaded. It's your it's your stuff. It's your home. You know, covering up all of our traces. Arseni says. 
his team could have done a lot of damage if they really wanted. You know, like you saw us, we could you know, knock off the camera and come over, open the door, grab a package or whatever and leave. What advice do you have for them? How can they make sure to secure their devices? Right. Well, for one, change your passwords. <laughs> uh, you want to have different passwords for each one of your online accounts. Make sure you use uh, you know, extra secure passwords for critical stuff like your email or, say, a Nest camera, because Nest camera is a window into your real life, right? It really is. It is. And you, you want to use two-factor authentication where it's possible. Strong passwords are a must. The longer, the better. At least 16 characters. In fact, try using a password phrase, three or four words that don't mean anything together, but you'll remember. Or use a password manager that generates and remembers passwords for you. As for the makers of smart devices... Did someone log in? Is it a suspicious login? Is it not your home IP address? Arseni would like to see some changes. What can the manufacturers do to make things more secure? The main things that they could implement would be use of two-factor authentication, because, you know, having just a password as the only thing that protects your smart home is not enough. Two-factor or two-step authentication is already offered by some companies like Apple and Google. When you log into your account on a new device, they ask for a special code that they send to your phone. Confirmation it's really you and not someone who stole your password. We asked the makers of Peter and Joanna's devices about two-step authentication and why it's not required. Amazon and Nest both say they have that option and encourage people to use it. Schleg says its lock just took orders from the Wink Hub. And as for Wink, after we share the results of our investigation, it announces a big change. Wink is now taking immediate steps to implement two-factor authentication. Meantime, our homeowners are taking steps too. Those unsecured cameras were quickly unplugged and are no longer open for the world to see. The clock seems to have stopped on that one. And Peter and Joanna, they've learned a thing or two. How are you guys feeling about this? You got these devices because they were cool and convenient. And they were and supposed to be secure. <laughs> do you feel that way still? Not really. <laughs> uh, I'd probably take the door lock off of the Wi-Fi and just keep it as a keypad. <laughs> Any other changes you would make? Uh, definitely passwords. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that would be the first thing after yeah. you guys leave. Everything yeah. is going to get changed. <laughs> Audio is recording. Undercover safety spot check. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. She's that baby's like nine months old. Kids just don't know that it's not safe. We are seeing injuries that are occurring at speed and force that we would not normally see. I asked her to stand up and that's when she realized she couldn't stand up. We visit trampoline parks across the country. In Ontario, Alberta, Nova Scotia, and BC. It's an unregulated industry no one is watching until now. All right, Corey, thank you. For many families, home surveillance cameras provide a level of protection, but what happens when someone breaches that system? NBC 15's Justin Moore has a warning if you are turning to technology for peace of mind. It's tonight's safety alert. Justin? Well, you know these home security cameras are supposed to add a level of protection for families, but you might not be the only person who's monitoring what's going on in your home. Who is that? I'm your best friend. I'm Santa Claus. Creepy moment for this eight-year-old Mississippi girl. A complete stranger talking to little Alyssa through this ring security camera. They could watch them sleeping. They could have watched them changing. I mean, they could have seen all kinds of things. Honestly, my gut, it makes me feel like it's either somebody who knows us, um, you know, or like somebody who's very close by. Ashley LeMay says someone hacked into the camera Hello. inside Alyssa and her sister's yes, room. Say, hey. Now the family is freaked out research on these before I got them. You know, like I really felt like it was safe. Recently, hackers tapped into a Florida family's security camera system as well. Wait, wait, so did your child come out black or like kind of like light skin? I don't know. What? 
Nothing. Some hackers are even stalking and breaking into victims' homes. You won't know something is wrong until something happens. Paula Antonio is a technical engineer here at NBC 15. She says the cameras are not the problem. It just might be human error with the owners. The most likely scenario is they didn't change the default passwords that come with the security system. Antonio says using unsecured wireless internet connections is a back door for these sneaky cyber thieves. She recommends using long and complicated passphrases instead of passwords when setting up your cameras. Uh, with upper lowercase letters, uh, numbers, symbols, things of that nature, the more secure you will, you will be. Experts say also avoid using free public Wi-Fi when accessing your cameras on your mobile phone. It's a sure way for hackers to get inside your family's most sacred place. But LeMay says she's done with these cameras. We should tell you that Ring is reportedly investigating both of these incidents are mentioned in this report. Kim, Greg? The burglary targeting a hospice thrift store caught on camera. The sign posted right outside here. Warning would be thieves, but it didn't stop a man from stealing. And tonight, ABC Action News reporter Heather Lee with how he tried to cover it all up. As if the cameras hiding in plain sight aren't enough, you'd think the sign posted to the back of this Newport Ritchie shopping center would keep thieves away. It sounds pretty damn silly to me because if you're going to go to that trouble, why wouldn't you look around? It's a five foot by five foot sign. Earlier this month, Rick Watson, the property maintenance man, was checking on the cameras he propped up behind Gulfside Hospice Thrift Store when he noticed one of them was gone. After reviewing hospice's cameras, they found this man hopping into the bed of his truck, stealing it. I never use just one. I always have a camera looking at a camera just for this situation. If you're going to steal from me, I'm going to find you. They also saw him sifting and sorting through donations left for the thrift store after hours on the loading dock. Although they aren't sure if he took any of the donations, they say that store brings in about $30,000 a month in sales, all of which go to hospice patients that can't pay for care. Gulfside supplies that money and that care to people that are dying. Not a good thing to be stealing. Watson says they invested in the cameras to crack down on illegal dumping and folks stealing donations. He says the truck seems to have a tire cage in the back, a yellow caution light on the roof, and a black push bar on the front. In Newport Ritchie, Heather Lee, ABC Action News. All new at five, spooky security camera footage. Yeah, a Metro Atlanta mom says it actually shows her son's ghost. CBS 46's Yasmina Alston spoke with some paranormal investigators to see if it's real or if it's a hoax. Here in Canton, Georgia, a group of paranormal investigators look into the supernatural. So it was only right that we asked them about what a mom says she saw in her security footage. It's definitely unexplainable. A Metro mom says her home security footage captured her son's ghost. Definitely tell that in the photo there is a human figure. On Facebook, Jennifer Hodge posted that she was watching TV with her daughter when an alert on her phone said your entryway camera saw someone. Here's what it showed. No one's around at the time and something gets captured that we can't explain. Hodge posted that the figure looks just like her son Robbie who died in 2016. Hodge told media outlets her son died of an accidental drug overdose. Now we showed the pictures to paranormal investigators Heather Thompson and Stephanie Forte with Paranormal Georgia Investigations. They agree with Hodge. Okay, now I'm understanding what she's talking about, but it was definitely a human figure. I mean, there wasn't anything questionable as to, okay, maybe that's a curtain that's billowing or maybe that's, you know, an appliance. That, that's definitely a human figure. The two are part of a group that investigate homes and businesses of those who think they're dealing with the paranormal. They tell me security footage can be helpful, but to confirm an actual home visit would be necessary. Hodge posted she is happy to be able to know her son is always with them. I'm glad that she's happy. I'm, I'm very glad that she's comforted and that this brings her joy um, because I wish more people would have that type of reaction to paranormal activity. In Canton, Yasmina Alston, CBS 46 News.
pumping in the rubbers today. That's why I was out so far. Is this on con continually yep. recording? Yep. Well, it's not. Is it motion, motion or is it event. okay? So it's motion. Any motion event that happens, I got. But I get cars driving from this street, from this street, and this is him at five seventeen. Usually park out there on the side. I just want to get everything back in. Be easier to load everything out there. All the tools that I had to bring in. Um, my detective just showed up, um, so he'll probably want to talk to you. He'd probably, like I said, he might have you call at the bank and see if there's any kind of activity. Because um, if there is any sort of action out there, of his cameras, I would have got it. Like right. had, I had, we had issues the other other week when people were coming, were stealing stuff out of like garages and stuff like that. And I have park my truck I right here. I have park right here. Yeah. So you someone, see if I can see where happened. someone tried to jimmy with a flathead screwdriver over there. And it was just like. But if any action would have happened, any cars or anything left yeah. your house, I yeah, would have. Yeah, would have been like right in that area. It should have picked. I mean. Like, oh, it'll pick up anything coming down the street this way. You know where that trigger is? Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Watch, I'll show you. There's nothing on here. We've already watched that one. But, like, you'll see this car. Security system you have. You can see this car starting to drive down the street. Right one. Oh, what? See what I'm saying? It picks yeah. up all the way down there. That's cool. He's next door. Can we go? I was talking about dispatcher. It'll be close for. Because, yeah, we can pick up cars coming this way. I get anything coming this way and make this turn. So, and usually at night, I pick up the car pulling a year turn. So, unless they pulled right here, yeah. but I would have caught her walking out. Diesel. Good. Yeah, I thought nothing. Nothing for the rest of the day. No, that's it. She's pregnant as well. How far along? 14, 15 weeks. That's why her friend said it was low blood sugar. And see, I've got her friend leaving out here at you know, two in the morning, I think. So that's my camera. She, she dropped her off at 1 in the morning, right? Uh, she's, that my doorbell said 148, she came in.
This is for Fenway Main at 148. So as soon as it picks up motion, it like fail. Okay. I'll touch you. That was the start of the video. Yep. Stop at 148 in the morning. It didn't pick her up going into the house though. It didn't. And I usually pick him up when he comes walking through here. Mm -hmm. I pick him up. So it doesn't show her walking into the house. Or she would have walked by when we just saw him. They see all these people coming in, they're like, what is going on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. How long does it typically record for? 30 seconds, I believe, at a time. But this is at 148, and then the next one I have is in at yeah. 5 whatever. So nothing, nice. no cars came through, because I guarantee, with the headlights, it picks up the headlights oh, yeah. automatically. And my vivid said that at 527, my garage door was left open. Well. It says it was shut during the day, but I think when Nikki's uh, son, he may have tried to move the, the, the door around, maybe when they were trying to get in the door, in the garage right. door, and it probably broke the, the laser there, because my alarm started going off. Well, I know he said the front door he tried going in, but he had the lock yeah, up, that's, that's for so the that set it so off, get out. right. And our remote on the outside doesn't work anymore, it got wet. And the whole radio on the back. So, yeah, that was it. Okay. All right. Appreciate your time. Yeah, no problem. Thanks. Hopefully, something comes up. Yeah. Well, if I, you just want to go talk to him, I'm going to get his info real quick. Are you able to record this? Uh-huh. I'd have to call Comcast so I can get him to do whatever. But watch, you'll see him get out. And he walks back and forth a couple times. To be completely honest with you, my wife and I were kind of wondering when she was on vacation if something happened, because I've heard them full out screaming at each other at the top of their lungs and he gets crazy. Does he? And that's pretty recently? Yeah. I'm guessing that's why she went and visited people is because she wanted to get away from the situation. Give your ID handy. Yeah. 
Right. Yeah, I've never seen him pull it back. I've never seen him. If he loads his stuff, he normally just walks back and forth because I get him on camera. What, what does he usually him. load up? All he usually has is a lunch box and a book bag. Looks like a computer. And usually a water jug. That's it. But the fact that he was in here and explaining to it over and over and over. Well, odd. It doesn't, he doesn't look worried. He looks like he's trying to cover his trap. You know what I'm saying? Right. And if he's loading his stuff, why isn't he walking back and forth? But I can't see what he's doing in the back of the truck because he pulls into the garage. Yeah. But he knows my camera's there. Any other neighbors have cameras around here you know of? Um, I'm sure a bunch of them do, but not that I know of. Okay. Yeah, I'll look at it. I'll, yeah. I'll do a search here in a minute. I just, all these ports kept coming up missing, so we moved in here. I put this in. And like he said, someone was breaking into it. He said that someone was breaking into his toolboxes of his truck. So I told him he could park his truck out there in case they saw something. Diesel, I know you want to go play with the baby so bad. <laughs> Her mom was texting me that we wanted to work. We have a GPS tracker on the truck that the delivery goes. Okay. Just a plan. Don't you think it's. Look at the. I know. I'm not. No, I'm just saying it's kind of odd that he pulls his truck back behind my camera. The cutoff, the truck is in the garage. Yeah, right. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying it's kind of odd that he pulls his truck back behind my camera. And he never backs his truck into the driveway. That's what her friend said. He never did it because he's got her neck. She's like, he never backs his truck up. Her mom said it too. She's like, he carries his stuff out from the house. He yep. doesn't back his truck up. Well, I have him on camera doing that when he does it. Because when he was parking his truck over here, the other thing was odd is why she was gone. He kept parking his truck and her car over here. And I used to see him walk. Out of this house he parked, right here. He took the car out of the garage? Oh, the car was parked over there for a long time. Like a couple days. This was past weekend? Uh, no. It was when she was gone for six weeks. Oh. But I thought it was kind of odd that he never parked in front of here or right here. He said someone broke into his truck and he parked over Why here. I have no idea. Hey, he acted so suspicious. He's normally, you can ask them, he's normally quiet, real subdued. He's over here telling them, telling you three times what he took out, what he did, what he did, what yeah, he did. He's very, he's very, very he never talks. So the fact that he's over here blabbing his mouth makes me kind of suspicious. Huh? Yeah, but, I mean, you put yourself in his situation. Oh, I agree. You know, anyone's going to be nervous, you don't know what to do. Um, no, I agree, but I'm just saying the way he told you three times what he brought with him, why is he telling you exactly what he brought with him instead of saying, well, they didn't see anybody out here, he didn't see anybody doing anything. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Why is he so worried about you knowing what he's carrying out? That's all I'm saying. The detective's talking to him. What's that? He's talking to him right now? Okay. Welcome everyone, it is Andrew here from Apple Insider, 
and this is the new Logitech Circle View, the successor to the wildly popular Circle 2 camera, and this model exclusively supports Apple's own HomeKit Secure Video. That makes it very similar to the Eve Cam that was announced earlier this year, and it makes it very easy and seamless to use. No third-party apps, no additional subscription fees, just encrypted video, 10 days of storage, and easy integration to Apple's smart home platform. The design of the camera is very sleek. It feels solid in the hand with a metal base and a matte black finish around the edges of the lens. It has a 180 degree field of view, and of course it powers over USB. Now, I do wish that this was USB-C rather than USB, but it does have a minor benefit that we'll talk about in just a moment. In general though, the cord is permanently affixed, so if something should go wrong with the cord, you can't change it or swap it out. Now while we're looking at the back, there's also this small button. This small button is actually used to enter privacy mode. You can press that button and immediately disable the camera, so that way you don't have to worry about having it on if you're in the room and you just don't want that camera to be looking at you. Now many privacy focused individuals don't think that is far enough, they don't want that camera looking at them at all and they don't trust that software button on the back. But fortunately there's a physical way to obfuscate the camera so it can't look at you, and that is tilting it down on that articulated neck. There is a hinge there that can put that camera straight down so it can't see into the room whatsoever. This is also a great swivel point allowing you to adjust the point of view, especially if you have it sitting down or if you mount it up on the wall with the including mounting bracket. The bottom of the camera is covered with a silicone ring, and of course you have your HomeKit pairing code. The ring is good, it stops it sliding a little bit, but the camera isn't heavy enough to really keep its place something would pull on that cable a little too hard. So make sure you have this thing placed where you want it to, and then it's not going to simply slide around. Because Circle View only supports HomeKit Secure Video, we don't need that Circle app or the Circle Safe subscription, it is so easy to set up and begin using. You just open the home app, tap on the plus button, add accessory, and scan the home kit code. It then walks you through the basic setup. There's a little bit more because this is a camera versus another passive accessory, but it's good to know what's going on. For instance, your privacy settings. When you're home, do you want the camera just completely off? Do you want it just to detect motion and activity so that you can use it to automate other accessories? Do you want to be able to stream but not record? Or do you want to allow to stream and record? And you can make those same choices for when you're away. Then you can control who in your house can see the camera, whether they can stream it or stream and view those recordings. The camera shows up as multiple accessories within the home app. There's the actual video feed itself, a light lux sensor, and of course, the motion sensor. The light and the motion sensor are great because those can be used to control other accessories like turning on lights when someone's in their room or turning on a night light when it gets dark. Since we are home, our camera has automatically disabled streaming. So if you go into the home app, you can't see anything and that goes for everyone else in your home. Of course, if you do enable streaming, you can easily see how good the quality of this camera is. Now, everything right here is streaming, and it actually gets even better quality when you're actually downloading the full footage in 1080p or saving it from the cloud versus just streaming it. But overall, the footage is good quality. It is 1080p, has that 180 degree field of view, but unfortunately HomeKit doesn't allow for higher resolution video. You can't get 2K or even 4K video through HomeKit, so it is a limitation of HomeKit and not necessarily a limitation of third party camera manufacturers. Still, the quality here is really good and we are very happy with how it turned out. It's very comparable to the previous generation Circle 2 camera. While we are recording, we still do see occasional stuttering, but that seems to be par for the course for any smart home cameras. Of course, as you can see here, this is the downloaded full 1080p resolution footage, and it does look better than when we were streaming it. There are several other changes you can make to this camera, all from within the home app. For instance, you can view those other accessories that are included here, including the Lux light sensor and that motion sensor. Those can be split off into their own tiles, if you so choose. You can include it in favorites. You can control notifications. And we really love being able to get those snapshots. So this will even show up on your Apple Watch as a snapshot of the motion that was captured. You can change, uh, you can get notification whenever that status has changed, like into uh, detect mode or recording mode, whatever it may be. And you can control when you get those notifications, certain times of the day, specific times, or when someone's home or when you're not home. We really like to have this working all the time when nobody is supposed to be in the house. And of course you can choose whether all motion is detected or just when a certain clip is recorded, which you can change under recording options. Recording options can detect any sort of motion or you can specify vehicles, animals, or people. 
Of course, you can also opt to record audio or not to record audio in those clips. Down below, you have a couple more options including turning off the status light if you so choose, and you can turn off the night vision lights. This will automatically turn on, but maybe if you have it up against the window, you want to turn those off. But there are two IR lights there that help for night vision, giving about 15 feet of view. Now this is very similar to the Circle 2 that it replaces, it just has a much updated body, it's still weather resistant so it can go outside except for the power cable, and it still has that large circular face. Other than the design change, the biggest change is that it doesn't require that third party Circle app at all. It runs entirely through HomeKit, no need for that extra subscription through that Circle Safe. Now we did mention there was one benefit to that USB-A port, and that is it works with some of the accessories from the Circle 2, such as this outdoor power adapter. You can easily plug your USB-A cable in here and use this camera outside. See, the camera itself is water resistant, but the cable, or the plug, is not. By using this little box, it makes it watertight, allowing you to mount this camera outside using your porch, on your deck, your driveway, whatever it is, and get that outdoor point of view. We really like the original Circle 2 camera. They were quick to adopt HomeKit over a software update, and they were quick to support HomeKit Secure Video. The Circle View is even better, designed for HomeKit from the ground up, and it definitely shows. Right now, if you're gonna pick out a camera, this would be the one that we'd go to. And if you do wanna grab one for yourself, you can find it at the link down below in the description. Let me know what you think over on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. Hey everyone, did you guys like that video? Be sure to click on that like button so we can create content that we know that you guys want to see. And follow Apple Insider on all social media channels. If you want the best prices on any Apple gear, check out the Apple Insider price guide that is updated daily. And until next time, we'll see you later. The $50 WiseCam Outdoor is by far the cheapest outdoor security camera I've ever tested. So today I'm gonna to walk you through how to set up and use Wise's battery powered outdoor camera and help you decide whether or not you should buy it. When Wise was founded in 2017, there weren't very many affordable home security cameras that also performed well and had a long list of features. But this startup continues to deliver and this $50 starter bundle is no exception. Out of the box, you get the camera itself, complete with mounting hardware and a charging cable. You also get a base station with a power cable as well as an ethernet cord that has to be connected to your router. You do need this base station for your camera to work. To set up your camera, download the Wise app, select add device, and then select Wise Cam Outdoor. The app will prompt you to connect the base station first, which should only take a couple of minutes before you move on to the camera. Make sure your camera is near your base station and your router and turn the power switch on the back of the camera to on. When the status light turns solid yellow, hit the sync button on the bottom of the camera and you'll hear, pairing is in progress, please wait. Once it connects, that's basically it, you're done. From start to finish, this process took me less than 10 minutes, which is incredible, but Factor in more time if your camera happens to arrive with a drained battery or if you plan to do a more permanent installation. Now that your camera is set up where you want it, it's time to talk about what this camera can actually do. If you already have a $20 Wise Cam or the $30 Wise Cam Pan, expect similar specs and features. With your Wise Cam Outdoor, you get 1080p HD live streaming, motion detection, a customizable motion detection zone, night vision, two-way audio, a built-in micro SD card slot, free 14-day cloud storage, time lapses, and support for Alexa and Google Assistant voice commands. The main differences between this camera and Wise's other models is its weatherproof housing, built-in rechargeable battery, and a feature called travel mode. The battery is supposed to last between three to six months on a single charge, but unfortunately it doesn't have a removable battery. That means you'll have to bring the whole camera inside every time you need to charge it, which is pretty inconvenient, especially if you do go with that more permanent installation and it's along a fence line or up in a tree or somewhere else that's difficult to get to. It's also annoying just because there will be a gap of time where the camera isn't recording what you want it to. Travel mode is an option that essentially turns your Wise Cam Outdoor into an action cam. So if you go camping or otherwise just want to use your camera outside of the base station and your home's Wi-Fi range, you can use a micro SD card to record motion clips and time-lapse videos. 
It isn't going to deliver the same quality as a GoPro, but it's a fun option that isn't available with Wise's other security cameras. Otherwise, this camera works the same as the others. You get quick motion alerts and can view saved clips for free in the app's events tab. The app displays how much battery life your camera has left, so you have a heads up before your camera dies. Overall, the Wise Cam Outdoor is a really good camera that takes the best parts of Wise's existing cameras and puts them in a weatherproof, battery-powered camera. I don't like that you can't remove the battery to charge it, but for 50 bucks, I'm not really mad about it. The two weeks of free cloud storage and built-in micro SD card slot give this cheap camera even more value. And the addition of features like time lapses and travel mode make the Wise Cam Outdoor even more compelling. Definitely consider it if you're looking for an affordable outdoor camera that's easy to set up and even easier to use. Thanks for watching this video. If you did like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to CNET on YouTube. Or, or don't. It's up to you. If any place would have good surveillance video, it would probably be a camera store. But three guys didn't think about that when they decided to steal a piece of equipment from the ProCam photo and video gear in Livonia. Well, now police are looking for the thieves featured clearly in this video. Coco McAvoy takes us there. ProCam, this is Emma speaking. How can I help you? ProCam in Livonia is a mecca for video fanatics. Okay, so you can either go with like something like this, it's standard. It's filled with every um, light, battery, gadget, and camera possible, both for sale and protection. We have two systems running outside, inside, night, day, all the time. I mean, we're a camera store, so why wouldn't we have the best? Ironically enough, though, the store was targeted yesterday, and there's not grainy video to prove it. We're talking about a camera store with HD cameras. They were able to capture the thieves every move. I think they were kind of dumb, really, truly. And put her information up there. And Emma Sikowski went. says the thieves tried to seem harmless. They asked about some chargers. I had one of my, my employees go over there and show them the charger. But the trio had other plans. We turned our back for one second to look at something else that they had asked about, and they kind of like took off. Running to a getaway car with a charger of all things. Why a charger and uh, why a camera store? Because, you know, we have cameras literally all over this place, so it doesn't make any sense why they would do it. If the thieves are bold enough to target a camera store with cameras everywhere, who are they going to steal from next? What are they going to steal from next? With crystal clear video showing the thieves, there shouldn't be a next time. Thanks, but anytime soon. And Livonia police need help finding the three guys in the video. So if you recognize them, make sure to call police. Reporting live this evening, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4. All right, Coco, and that video is really clear. So I'm assuming that we might be hurrying uh, back on this case pretty soon. We appreciate it. The Mantis camera is the most powerful camera in the world. We took the best cameras we could get, 19 of them, and put them together. You'll be able to see everything all the time, everywhere, find out who did it and where they went. I'm uh, looking for my friend uh, Ming Hao here in the streets of uh, Shanghai. Uh, we should be able to find him. We have a 100 megapixel uh, super video camera. If somebody sneezes on the street, we're going to catch the sneeze. I'm trying to hide myself from Brady in Shanghai, but, well, maybe he's watched me. The camera is really far away from us. You can see that on the rooftop of that building. Is that him? No, that's not him either. My group and I have been working on this uh, camera technology for about 20 years. We spent 20 to 30 million dollars. Mm, is he watching me? Oh. It would be hard for him to find me. <laughs> I need to write better algorithms to find these guys. Hello? 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 Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I got you. Uh, can you see me? I'm jumping and I'm waving my hands. That's really cool. Really good. The camera did great, but the first one kind of broke down. It took a lot more data than I could analyze myself, but I found uh, Ming Hao in the end.
So in public security, usually something bad happens, you go look at the security footage and the image quality is just not very good. The Mantis camera allows us to zoom into any point in an image. If you have a large crowd, let's say at a stadium, you should be able to zoom in and identify anyone in the crowd. They do use it in China to find criminals, people they're looking for. If there's an attack and you're interested in what happened after the attack, you can track uh, where people went. The reason that I'm in China is because this is where I need to be to build these cameras. Camera companies like uh, or GoPro, their hardware is all manufactured in China. And you can't really make a lens that would make a high quality image over a very large sensor. So the Mantis camera has 19 micro cameras. The main challenge in putting all 19 images together in the Mantis camera is just the massive data load that's required to process all that data. So we've embedded a supercomputer inside the camera that can do real-time video analytics. We have two of these boards, each with uh, five uh, computers inside of it so it can process the data stream coming from the parallel camera array and then out to the, the wide world uh, broadcast. You know, there's this famous scene in Blade Runner where Harrison Ford says, zoom, zoom, zoom. Enhance. Stop. And at that time, the movie came out, it was strange to see an actor talking to a computer. But now that's commonplace. So this ability to zoom into an image indefinitely is something that hasn't existed that we're trying to build. That over the next uh, three or four years, we believe we'll be able to make uh, gigapixel scale cameras that will be you know, around the size of a current uh, GoPro, about uh, 10 centimeter cubes. There's a lot of things in the world that are never seen, that can be seen. How many birds are in the sky, what animals are around us, where people are, all these things that we just don't know. So having a camera that can capture everything is going to change our life. Hi, I'm Evan Tree, Chief Products Officer of the Logitech Digital Video Security Group. And I've been in the security industry now for over 25 years. And I tell you, I could not be more excited about the product that we have in front of you today. This is the new Logitech Alert Video Security System. And the Logitech Alert Video Security System comes with an indoor camera and an outdoor camera. Have you ever wondered what happens when you're away from home? Why the packages that the UPS man left on the door uh, are no longer there. These cameras are the solution to that. They allow you to be your eyes while you're away. So you can come home and you can review what happened while you're away. Or you can get alerts live sent to your mobile phone or your smartphone telling you that there's motion on your property. This is absolutely the easiest video security system to set up in the world. Hands down, no questions asked. We use HomePlug AV technology, which actually turns your electrical wiring in your home into a network. So you simply load software on a PC, plug the cameras in, the cameras are connected to the network via the existing electrical wiring, and you're up and running. It really is that easy. And then when I come home at the end of the day, I simply fire up my computer, launch the Commander software, and the cameras will download all of their video to a permanent storage on my computer where I can then review what happened while I was away and I can also send that video or share it with other people. If you think about digital video or video surveillance in general in the past, we always kind of think of that grainy, hard to see video, hard to recognize people, license plates, cars. Well, that's all changed with the Logitech Alert Video Security System. You now have true high-definition video that's captured and stored for you to review and for you to share. The Logitech Alert Outdoor Camera is truly unique in that it produces a high-quality color image during the day, but at night 
It turns on its special infrared illuminators and can see in complete darkness and provide a similar experience or similar footage. Whether you're using the iPhone, the Blackberry, or the Android, specifically designed applications allow you to view live video from anywhere in the world. You can also see live video from any internet connected PC or Mac computer. We also offer a premium web and mobile bundle for those of you wishing to have full feature functionality while on the go. As a lifelong security professional, I honestly believe that this is the most powerful consumer digital security product on the market. Go ahead, give it a try.